We're going to be doing a video here for semispinalis capitis. There's going to be three sections of it, but we're going to be starting off with capitis. So semispinalis capitis is a very large muscle in the posterior aspect of your neck that extends down into your upper back. And I'm actually going to be starting at the insertion and working my way back towards the origin. It's very easy to find this muscle if you're starting on the spinous process in the back of the neck and you ask your person to just lift their head up slightly out of the cradle. If you moved lateral over top of the lamina, this big portion of muscle that's sticking up right here is semispinalis capitis. So I'm actually grabbing it on either side and I'm going to follow it right up into the back of his occiput. Now he's going to relax for me, put his head in the cradle. So I've identified the external occipital protuberance here. And if I go off lateral to that, this is the superior nuchal line. And then I'm going to drop deeper or towards the neck. So this insertion is between the superior and inferior nuchal line of the occipital bone. So again, if you were to sink in and they lift their head up slightly, it will easily be pushed off and then relax. Or I could grab the muscle belly and follow it right up into the base of the occiput here in between those two. So this is our insertion. It's quite a thick muscle. We use it quite a bit to extend the neck and the head. Now for palpating the origins, it has quite a bit of origins that run down along the lateral vertebrae. So I'm going to be starting by finding his thoracic 1 and cervical 7. So I've identified C7 and T1. I'm going to move over and I'm going to palpate my way down along the transverse process of thoracic 1 to 6. Okay, good. So again, finding T1 and counting your way down, and I'm just using my spinous process palp as an aid to make sure I'm in the right space. So all along here, over top of the transverse processes of the thoracic spine. And then again, back at C7, it is the transverse process of cervical seven plus the articular processes of six, five, and four. So you have your SPs, you have your lamina, and then you have your articular processes of those inferior cervical vertebrae. So those are the origins from cervical four all the way down to thoracic six lateral. So that makes this fiber direction go pretty close to straight up and down, which is why it really is a good extender of the head of the neck. So again, he's going to lift his head and his neck and look forward just a little bit. Great. So that is the main function of this muscle, especially acting bilaterally. If you are acting unilaterally, it can do a little bit of a lateral flexion. So again, he's going to lift his head up. It slightly tilts towards the side but there really isn't going to be a lot of rotation. Again, depending on your source, it might discuss a little bit of a contralateral rotation, just bringing that slightly closer towards those TVPs, but other sources really only list this as two extension and lateral flexion of the head and neck at the spinal joints. That's going to conclude capitis, and we will return for the other segments. All right, continuing on with our palpation of semispinalis, we're now going to look at cervices. So what you're going to do is palpate down and try to find the cervical 7 and thoracic 1. You've seen me do this before, but I am going to be using the neck to create rotation of that 7th cervical. Once I've identified thoracic 1, I'm going to move lateral towards its transverse process. Again, depending on your source, you might have some textbooks talking about a little bit of C7. Others will start at thoracic 1, and it's going to go down three, four, and five. So it is the transverse process of the upper thoracic vertebrae in here. And with all of the paraspinal muscles, including semispinalis, they originate lateral and insert more medial. So you have the upper T-spine inserting into the upper C-spine. So I'm gonna palpate from his external occipital protuberance of the occipital bone, go down, drop off towards C1, and its first insertion is going to be on the spinous process of two, three, four, and five, and possibly six, again, depending on your source. So the upper 
spinous process of the cervical vertebrae from the upper transverse process of the thoracic vertebrae. With this fiber direction, these muscles are going to extend and do a slight bit of contralateral rotation as well as a slight bit of lateral flexion. So he's gonna lift his head up, there's the extension, and he's gonna look towards me, which is away from the side the muscle's on, and now they're lining themselves up. So that is the contralateral rotation. And again, if he laterally flexed a little bit, you might be able to, if not, don't worry about it. Good, so let's go back down towards the cradle. So that's going to be extension, lateral flexion, and contralateral rotation of the neck as its primary action. And this muscle tissue is not on the surface right away, so you have to palpate through other layers, and it is gonna blend a little bit with semispinalis capitis since that one is more superficial. So again, you have origins and insertions. That's gonna conclude our palpation of cervices, and we will return for thoracis. All right, the last section that we're gonna be palpating of semispinalis is the thoracis segment. So you can either start from the bottom or the top. Our attachments are gonna be the TVPs in and around thoracic six towards 10. So again, you can either start by trying to identify where 10 is, or you can count down towards where six is. I'm just gonna do a quick count down, thoracic one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm gonna palpate lateral towards the TVP, and then I'm gonna work my way down seven, eight, nine, and 10. So these are the transverse process of thoracic six to 10. In this area here. Again, I am pushing through some of the rectors. I'm not getting a really good palp of those TVPs. I'm just more in the general area. So we have our origin in this space here. And then we're going to go back up towards the top, again, identifying where cervical seven is in this area. So attaching to the spinous process of six or seven, again, depending on your source, T1, two, three, and four. So from this mid to lower thoracic spine to the upper thoracic spine. So again, same as the other sections of this muscle, it is a main extender. However, its fiber direction along with services turns into a contralateral rotator. So if he was to extend and lift his head up out of the cradle and then start to rotate away from the side the muscle is on, so towards me, Great, so Matt past the neck, once he starts moving that T-spine a little bit, he is going to be creating that contralateral rotation. So again, you can go back down to the cradle. So along with rotatories and multifidi, semispinalis is the contralateral rotator of the spine. And semispinalis is really only in the upper part of the body where you'll see more multifidus in the lower portion of the body. So you have a greater concentration of multifidus in here, but you will see more from semispinalis up in here. So again, transverse processes, six to 10, inserting towards spinous process of cervical six or seven, down towards thoracic four on those SPs. Extension, lateral flexion, and contralateral rotation. And that's going to conclude our palpation of all three segments of semispinalis.